Greetings, and welcome to a new episode of Art Matters. I'm your host, Wayne Quackenbush, and today I'll be interviewing two New England artists. Uh, the first one that I'll be talking to is Michael Benish. Michael, welcome to the show. Thank you, Wayne, for having me. Yes, and uh, we've been talking for a while. I've met you recently through uh, the Portsmouth Arts Guild and uh, you tend to do mostly landscapes. Yes, that's correct, Wayne. I do landscapes and I'll, I'll do seascapes and sometimes I'll do um, barns. I like doing barns and um, you know, other structures as well, but I primarily focus on landscape paintings. And what got you started in, uh, in your endeavors? Well, I've always had a, um, I've always liked art, mm -hmm. you know, even as a child, um, I would, paint, draw, take art in school. Um, I always watched that gentleman on TV that's always fascinated people forever, Bob mm -hmm. Ross, and yep. I was always so fascinated with how he could paint a painting so fast in a half hour. Did you ever pick up on any of his techniques? I did start uh, with that wet on wet technique, yep. um, but I have since moved away from that and kind of developed um, different ways of painting. And um, you would consider yourself uh, self-taught, possibly? Mostly? Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely self-taught. Um, I've, I've watched a lot of tutorials, and mm -hmm. um, I've learned from them. I'm still learning. I learn every time I paint. I figure something else. Um, I figure something else out that, you know, will fit the painting or, you know, my, my style. And did you start using oil paints? Well, I, I did start with the oil paints. I, I can paint with um, acrylics as well. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are acrylic and oil, uh, but uh, primarily uh, oil paints right now. Mm -hmm. and it's uh, just a lot more forgiving and uh, they blend so well, so I really like them. Well, a lot of people are daunted by oils to start, and I was just curious as to, I mean, it, it's, it's like almost like jumping into the deep end of the pool. It's, it's a, it's, um, it's, it's, it takes um, a lot of figuring out. You can't, uh, you know, when I first started, I got really frustrated at times because I just couldn't figure out how it worked. And I, I kept at it. I kept watching tutorials. I kept practicing and painting. And eventually I started evolving into something that I was, I was really liking, other people were liking. And um, so I just, you know, stuck with it and practice. Practice makes perfect. Now, do you start with a drawing, or um, do you have some kind of underpainting that you do? Sometimes I'll sketch at <clears> first, um, but a lot of times, most of the times, I just I just dive right into it. I'll you know go from a stock photo online or something, you know, it's mostly stock photos, or I just make it up as I go and uh, see how it evolves and just make it happen. And when I first met you, uh, the first work I saw from you were um, desertscapes. Yes. And I always thought, wow, that's yeah. kind of unusual for a Rhode Island artist to, to paint the desert. Yeah, it, I just, I'm just fascinated by all those colors, those reds yeah. that are in the desert and uh, just that whole earthy tone. Earthy, it's more like Mars. Yeah, it sure is, <laughs> isn't it though? Um, but I, I've done a few of those. Um, as you know, I have some hanging up out there at the uh, yep, yep. Portsmouth Art Center mm -hmm. at Common, uh, Common, Common Fence, Fence Point. Point. Yep. Um, and thank you for having me out there, by the way. Of course, you very, know, every, very everybody's welcome. I mean, you can start showing your work and talking about how, sure. how you accomplish what you do. Okay. So we'll start yeah, with this ahead. one here. This is my latest one that I finished up a few days back. As you noted, it's still wet. It's still a little tacky <laughs> here and there, um, but I call this one Hunter's Cabin. Uh, as you can see, there's a cabin off to the yep. your right, my left, and um, it's and you oil. Said, you said that you uh, basically made this up from imagination. This one, yes. This is um, I just started uh, with the sky. And, mm -hmm. um, and it just went from there, and I just brought it all forward and made, made, it, made it into this. Well, you, get, you kind of evoke um, a, a kind of light. Uh, yes. It's, you could say it's either just after dawn or heading towards twilight, and 
you're using your aerial perspective, things are uh, blurring correct. out into the distance and yes. getting more detail in the front. Correct. And uh, you get a real sense of um, space and time. Yes. So uh, it's uh, very effective. Yes, yes. It's, um, yes, you're, 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 you're right on point with everything. So that's how I, that's how I try to present it. Um, you know, in the painting, the further away, a little blurry, and bring it forward uh, with uh, the detail to make kind it all come together. You are there. Yes, in the lighting is very important. Uh, important too. Excuse yep. me. Yep. So, do you want to name names? Some of the people you've looked at and, and are inspired by, or? Well, sure, of course. You know, I started um, inspired by Mr. Roth on TV, as so many people have uh, watched and uh, are fond of. So fond of that that man. Mm -hmm. He's amazing, you know. So that was, you know, he was the first one. But even now, I see uh, young artists such as Kevin Hill, and there's uh, uh, Andrew Tischler, mm -hmm. and there's uh, Chuck Black. They're just amazing artists, and they come up with the most amazing works. And um, they're very proficient in how they evolve their paintings. It's, it's amazing work. You tend to work in a in a particular size I see everything's very consistent here. well I lately mm -hmm. I've been working on this size they're 18 by 24 inch um, I've done other sizes um, but right now I feel like this fits my so you know it's interesting because 18 by 24 that's a 2 by 3 um, um, Geometric, and it's the same um, space that a 35 millimeter photograph would have. Sure. Yeah, I think that's why they used it on uh, their shows so much. Oh, of, really? Yeah, because it fit the uh, the cameras very well. <laughs> yeah, very cool. So uh, this one is um, the old weathered barn. Um, I started the barn in acrylics. The uh -huh. barn is acrylics. I put some oil over it, and everything around it is oil. Um, the barn I saw on uh, stock. Mm -hmm. uh, and everything around that I basically made up. Mm -hmm. It could be somewhere in Rhode Island. It could be. Yeah, there's a lot of barns, so it's um, <laughs> it's possible. Maybe somewhere in New England. I come from rural New York, and they there are so many barns they actually make calendars of them. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. be good to work from. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. All okay. right. So Let's that's just keep moving. Okay. We got a few paintings to get through. Of course. Now, like you said, I've done some desert scenes, and this is... Um, and you changed it up and worked in vertical. And it, yes. It this lends one, itself to that. That's correct. And I call this one Golden, Golden Heights. Um, I just have to come up with a name for all of them. Right. Sometimes it's, um, not, they don't always come out uh, right away. I have to think about it. Um, well, you're working on a catalog, and they, you have to have a list of what your work is. That's true. So that's it, it's, very there's true. something you know, fantastical about it. Just... Uh, it's uh, very uh, moody in a way. Sure, mm -hmm. absolutely. So, and I have a number of the uh, <clears throat> desert paintings as well, as you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this one is a seascape. This one, is, uh, I call it a ray of hope. Okay. Um, so that one was um, fun to paint. I, I, I really like doing the skies. They are fun to do. I like. I don't know. I always start, of course, with the sky. It's I think that clouds are probably the most fascinating things to, to um, paint. You can uh, play a lot with clouds. You can. Um, the ocean. I've always heard uh, from artists that water is the hardest thing to paint, and uh, it seems a lot of artists are <laughs> attracted to water. There's a lot to it, um, you know, the um, perspective, the, um, you, know, uh, you know, darker, further away, and well, you get you, it lighter, you, you have the to, shallow water, it gets a little lighter, and... Yeah, you have to evoke the transparency of it, but absolutely. it's also, even though it's a liquid, there's, it's solid, too. That's right. Yeah. Very much so. And, and uh, the light. Uh, yes. Uh, Very the edges important. of the cloud and, and that, uh, that effect of the, the spears coming through. Yeah. Perhaps a little too sharp, but effective. Yeah. I can fuzz them out a little bit in a later date. Yeah. Do you ever go back and rework them? I do. Mm -hmm. I do. I have many times, as a matter yeah. of fact. Yeah. Yes. So, so do you find the whole process of painting kind of, does it stress you out or do you find it meditative? Um, there has been stressful <laughs> moments. I cannot lie about that. Mm -hmm. But overall, it, 
I, I really get into it. And once I'm, once I'm working on a piece, I, I can't get away from it. I yep. keep going back to it. I say I'm going to take a break. It's a very short break. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't do it in one day. Yeah. It takes a few days for me to, you, you know. You have a separate place where you can work by yourself? I have yourself? a studio, yes. Yeah. I have a, a, a studio that you, I've, I've created. Do you need privacy or can you work with people around? I, I usually, it's usually a private thing for me. Uh, my girlfriend, Michelle, she... Yeah. She has a good pair of eyes and will suggest things. Yep. Um, but I believe I could do it with other people as well. If it was outside or um, something to that effect, I could probably get along with that just fine. Do you ever do plein air? Do you ever go outside and paint? I have not done that yet. Um, it's something I'm interested in trying. Uh, I think it'll be a different perspective as far as colors go and sunlight or uh, cloud. You know, it's going to be a different experience. Well, I heard an interesting story this past weekend from this woman who said that uh, she tried, she was a big fan of plein air and did a lot of it, but then one time she was out and the wind caught all of her stuff, her oh, canvas, her paints yeah, and everything and sure. dumped it in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> it must have fallen off a cliff or something. And, and she said, from that moment on, I only paint abstracts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can see I can see where she got that from. And uh, is this a particular place? What's the title on this one? This one is called Golden Meadow. Um, uh, it was I got the idea from stock mm -hmm. uh, stock photos again, but I I don't I always switch things around. This tree you see in the front was not in the photo. I I put that in myself. And is that a particular kind of tree? Uh, no, I just made it up. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't give it a title. I don't know if it's. An, it could be an oak tree for all. Well, I mean, I it, it's, it's it's interesting because it's almost like. Um, obviously, you're here on Earth, and you're and you're representing earthly things, but yes. there's something um, like alien landscape about it. Almost. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. it's just. So on the eye of the beholder, that's what's fun about art. And, and, and this can, is kind of like, oh, this is what my head looks like, sure. my brain. This that's is where, right. this is a peaceful place that I want to go to. It's very true. <laughs> it's all open to interpretation, let Absolutely, me tell you. Absolutely, yeah. That's yeah. what's so fun about it. I enjoy it so much. Okay. Now, this is a, a series I did just recently. I call it the Blue Ridge series. Oh, cool. Um, a lot of good lighting effects. Um, now, the Blue Ridge is... Uh, um, Kentucky, somewhere down south. It's it's it, there's it, North Carolina, Western North yeah, Carolina, okay. you like know, the Appala Eastern Tennessee. Appalachians. Sure, absolutely. Yep. yep. Yes, indeed. And this is uh, one of three that I did of the Blue Ridge mm -hmm. uh, series. Mm -hmm. I call it. And um, you can see there. I I really tried to focus on lighting in this series. Um, yeah, it's interesting how you caught the, the, the path of the sunlight coming and then part of it's in shadow and you have different temperatures happening here. It's a yeah. lot warmer and cooler over there. Yes. But, it, you know, I mean, um, I grew up near the Appalachians in New York and oh. it's kind of evocative of that. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Very, very beautiful area. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's one of three. This was two of three. Again, I try to focus on the light coming through. Yep, and again, those uh, not uh, the crags that you would see in the Rockies. It's a, these are much older um, mountains they and, and uh, ground down by time. That's correct. And you and you bring that out in the uh, shape. Yes. Yeah. They're more of a it's more of a rolling effect. Yep. Very very nice. Very beautiful. Yep. Hills and things like that. Absolutely. I had a really good time doing this, these Blue Ridge Mountains. I think I will, I may do some more of those Absolutely. in the, in the and, near and future. Absolutely, and your, uh, I mean, you, your pieces have such an evocative uh, sense of um, uh, peace, I guess you would call it. This was a very peaceful and, series, and indeed. contemplation. Mm -hmm. I, lo I really like the way this one came out. I love the lighting effect that uh, it, it shows um, with the shadows on either side um, it's just uh, this was a really I had a really good time painting this one mm -hmm. and I, was, I was very happy with the results yep well here we go yes we, sir. we made it to the end okay I want to thank you for coming by and uh, spending time with us thank you for having me thanks for sharing your work I appreciate it yep thank you so much You're welcome okay
I'm here with my second guest, uh, the artist Mandy Howe. Welcome to the show, Mandy. Thank you. We've known each other for a number of years through various different venues around Rhode Island. And uh, I remember you telling me at some point that you were a teacher and uh, at the, the Penfield School in uh, Portsmouth. And then um, tell us a little bit about your beginnings. You, uh, you, you were saying that as a child you had uh, a very artistic household. I, you sent me the questions you were going to ask, and the first one was edu your art education. Yes. And I did go to school later, not sort of intentionally, but um, and, I, and I thought back to growing up, and it was just a very art-rich environment. But, yes. I mean, there was a lot of music because my dad was a musician, and my mom's father, parents were both artists. Her, her father was an art teacher. And so the, there was art in the house, art around the house, and just kind of part of everything, I and you guess. You said that your grandfather had, had uh, lots of work that uh, is spread around the family. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And um, when you were a kid, did you get to draw much, or were you All encouraged? The All the time. Just as kind of part of daily life, I think. I yeah. mean, and we, you know, my with my brother and sisters and... Yeah. It's when a, we were sick, I most remember that. If we stayed home and were sick, Mom would bring us new art supplies and we drew. I mean, oh. it was just kind of what we did. Sure. I mean, when you're a kid, it can be as natural as breathing. Yeah, uh, exactly. But, you know, uh, yep. I hear stories from different people and, and they'll be like, why are you wasting time with that, those crayons and those pencils? Well, you should be outside and, and playing. Yes. You should be running around or doing something. So... It's always heartening to, to uh, hear that someone is... Really, uh, yeah, I was really lucky, I think. <coughs> and, and you said even in church, your mother would pass out pads of paper and, mm -hmm. and the kids would draw during, during the sermon. sermons. I know. Oh. And I, to the, I never knew what was going on. It was like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, and then you just sit and draw. And you get, you, get, uh, you know, it's, it's always nice to be lost in your work. Yeah, even as a child. And then you went on to go to uh, art school after high school, right? Not right away, no, no because in, uh, mostly I, I was, I guess, I don't know how to explain it. I didn't. I headed off to college. I think it was English and religion, mm. um, and I was up in Boston. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was, I was headed in, and I think teaching, or I was very politically oriented, so social work. I mean, I did community work. And then one, I, my aunt took me on a trip, and mm -hmm. she was a painter. Mm -hmm. And I, picked, I sat on a dock and picked up her paints one day. This is a true story. And something went off in me, and I went, oh my God, this is what I'm supposed to do or this is what I'm going to do. Wow, like a calling. It was. Mm. It really was. And then I started, just jumped in. Now, were you confronted by nature and had to do the scene in front of you, or you just you just oh. really liked the, the feeling of applying the brush to the canvas or paper or whatever? Something. I, I don't remember the details that yeah. much. It was sort of a whole being experience. And yeah. I was sitting near the water on a dock. Yeah, and uh, absorbing the atmosphere and, and... And then I lived, I lived outside of Boston and just worked on my own. And mm -hmm. then at one point I realized, oh, I know why people go to art school. You need to learn stuff. This is really isolated. So I applied to the museum school, and, and which at that time was 800 a year or something mm. in... I got some help from my parents, but mostly did it with little jobs. And then they put me into, it was part of the best program, you know, of art school. They had a summer intensive. Mm -hmm. And out of that, because I had no training on it, out of that, uh, I think there were 80 of us and they selected 20. So oh. that's how I got in and got help to go there. And, and so it was immersive and you would do... Um, I loved it. It was very directed. 
Uh huh. Yeah. And and the usual figure drawing and every, 3D the, every, design yeah, and yep. painting. And I don't remember that in museum school we did. I don't know if you know about the museum school, but it, you kind of developed your own path for better or worse. I know, with, like RISD's a lot more academic yeah. kind of. But we had, like I, I would start out in, I think I did a lot of ceramics. I thought I wanted to do ceramics. Mm -hmm. And then I just rolled out slabs of clay and drew in it. Oh, and wow. Twice a year, or three times a year, we had what was called a review board. And three faculty and two students looked at all your work. It was like having a cri big critique. And, and how did you how did you portray or or uh, show off your slabs? With well, them? they they knew that's what I'd been doing, and there I had all these paintings and drawings, and so finally they said, "Maybe I don't know, maybe you should go painting and drawing." So that's how sort of how the review boards were. Well, it was like you were making your own canvases. I don't, you know, I know. I don't know, but I it just remember. It sounds very primitive and primal. I liked it. I, I still like it. But meaning that's how you went through the museum school, was like sort of having show, putting up a show, having a critique review, mm -hmm. and then sort of direction of what to work on. Yeah, that's what pretty typical. Next. You would, yeah. uh, um, uh, when I went through that process, you would everybody would kind of put up their artwork and the faculty would walk around and, 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 and talk to you about it or, or write you notes about things like that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But there was no basic requirement, which I sort of regret. You know, yeah, you, you would have appreciated more structure. Yeah. Do uh, so you want to anyway. talk about some of your work? I mean, sure. We yep. Um, well, I always work in a series. Mm -hmm. I work, always work up from outside or something in the natural world because mm -hmm. that's kind of where I get obsessed with something or mm -hmm. see something. So then I carry it through in a series. And this was a series um, using topographical maps. I, I was looking at them recently and I've been doing them since about 2003. So my series kind of keep going or I come back to them. So is this a collage you've made of? This uh, is, I cut it out of a topo map. Oh, okay. So and that's a three-dimensional uh, map that you cut into an animal shape. Yes. Yes. And same with the buffalo. Yes, painting. the one the, the, yeah. the sh in the show that we were talking yeah. about. Yes. Then the crows are, so the rest is collage. And then these, this one was. You, you can probably bring that oh, out so right. that we can see it better. Um, there, so this one I did, this one and that one, the Buffalo one, and this one I did 2022 for April Earth Month, Earth Week. Okay. Sort of about animals that were endangered or threatened. So like a year ago. A year ago. <laughs> so and so my attention being they are where they live like the tubo maps are inside the bring it a little bit like this and then i don't know if you can you can still point it that's okay okay because you know what they are are, they, are these all wolves they're all wolves it, it's called wolf moon and they were on a place called wolf ridge okay and they all have their maps of where they live and how they survive are in them I'm, it's more and more trying to get the animals um in the in the within the landscape okay so Connected what locations it. are you using here um this was during the wolf moon uh -huh. in the winter and then i think i on another map i saw the name wolf ridge and just kind of made it up okay this i did very quickly okay yeah yeah the, the you know it's very um the brushwork is very expressionistic and and um, you used obviously models to do your uh, collage figures. Mo models. Yeah, you you had a, you look at pictures of wolves and cut them out. Yes. In that yep. Shape. Yep. And glued them on. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah, I've been using a lot of silhouettes in my big murals. I've been doing I use silhouettes. Yes. I, I think I feel like they're simple statements. It's like we see so many images now that if you look at it at a shape. Well, I mean, People I used the word shape. primal earlier, yeah. and, and silhouettes, um, 
are evocative of the of the creature but they're also simple because yes. you're not doing the nuance of the anatomy yeah. you're just doing the the outline of it and <clears throat> i just love how you have all of this brushwork and then you weren't afraid to let that color just run down I yeah mean, it's just it's very forceful the drift I mean, yes yeah. yeah yeah i love doing i love doing that and then this one is this one i this is connected to my big buffalo painting that, that what it was like in, which is up at Portsmouth Arts. It's a, yeah, it's a common fence point. Common fence point. Yeah. So again, you okay? You've gone beyond the maps here, though. It's like you, <laughs> you don't have done? any. You don't. You don't. You 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 make oh, yes, up your own yes. rules for each piece. Right. Well, and this one, it's coming apart. <clears throat> I can see. Um, I or, order, actually ordered these cutouts online. Oh really? <laughs> and use them to trace them. And this, there's that famous, there's a famous painting called the Buffalo Trail. Oh yeah. Beerstadt. And well, I you can, sort of. I mean, it's also, you, it's like, oh yeah, we can make buffalo cookies now. <laughs> Something. <laughs> yeah. So they have a little bit of everything, and this is, um, yes. you know, like this is fracking wells out west, and yeah, I, I mean, the things yeah. that are threatening to the environment. Yes. So y yes. you have a topological map here. And then you have an oil field, field yep. here, yep. and then some kind of landscape, and then more buffalo, and then there's some text going on. Yes. Does that have significance? This does. It does. It's connected to the the big buffalo painting, which is what is not here. Right. Right. <laughs> but it said it was about uh, 1,500 buffalo bison uh -huh. were released recently to the Rosebud Reservation. Yeah, because they're coming back. Yes. yes, and they can be raised and used there. Yeah. And that's what that other painting is about. And what's going on in the background? It almost looks like a, oh, a woodcut. There. That's exactly, that leads perfectly into this and what I'm doing now. Yes, um, this was a linoleum block print I just did on the canvas. I don't remember if it had a buffalo Yes, it is. It, I have a large cutout of a buffalo that I uh, Would that carved. be lin linoleum? Or yes. Okay. Soft cut. And I cut out. This is a linoleum block print on the canvas. So you made the block print and then you applied your collage pieces? Yes. Yeah. And now I'm doing that, um, but with figure shapes. I'm trying to combine printmaking and painting. Yeah. And collage. I really like it. Like block printing on the canvas or on something. And Absolutely. Then, yeah, yeah. And this is kind of the reverse. Oh, the, let's, let's see this one now. This is this is a woodcut or no, this is a linoleum. This is a, during COVID. Uh-huh. Um I found it really hard to paint. I was very anxious. Yeah. I was could not immerse myself in painting, but I could. I went back to block printing. Okay, and you could because carve. I could sit and carve yeah. like and it, anxiously, it, and then the printmaking itself. I'm sure there was more about the the texture of it that uh, appealed to you at that time yep. during your solitude. And the um, uh, then the printmaking itself is very spontaneous. I mean, things happen. Yeah. So then I worked into it with acrylics. Okay. Well, now we've run out of time already. Okay. <laughs> so I really want to thank you for coming by <laughs> and spending your time and, and uh, showing us your so work. So welcome. Thank you, everybody, for sharing your time with us. And watch us next time on Art Matters.